everybody to the Single and Stiletto Show. I'm Suzanne Oshima, and I'm a matchmaker and dating coach at Dream Bachelor and Bachelorette, and I'm also the founder of Single and Stilettos. Today we have in our show Robert Manny, and he's the author of The Guy's Guy's Guide to Love, and I'm so excited to have him here today because today we're talking about five ways to survive a first date. And ladies, I know you've been on a first date, and you've been like, oh my God, this is like torture or you, you're worried about going out on a first date. So he's going to give us some five great tips on how to survive a first date. Before, But before we jump into it, Robert, tell our audience about you because I know you're the author of The Guy's Guy's Guide to Love and I know ladies are wondering about what this is. Okay, well, uh, I'm the author of The Guy's Guy's Guide to Love. It's a novel and it uh, takes place in the world of advertising where I come from. And it's really about two men uh, competing for love, sex, power, and money. In, in New York's advertising world and it's got some fun characters and some great female characters in it and uh, it's kind of a male sex in the city. Exactly and ladies I will tell you it's an awesome book you should go get it. It's, yes. it's really really good. It kept me I'm like I couldn't stop reading it and I didn't want it to end but <laughs> I did it really but okay so let's jump into this. How oh, could yes, a woman... I'm working on the sequel. Oh well good. <laughs> well, hurry up. <laughs> Okay, well, let's jump into the topic of five ways to survive a first date. And Robert, I know you say the first way is, number one, you only have one chance to make a first impression. And this sounds so obvious, but I can't tell you how many men and women don't get this concept. So can you elaborate on it? Yeah, I, I think it's it's critical. You know, it's in life. You only get one chance to make a first impression. So what's uh, you know, what's more important to you than, you know, you're, there's your career and there's your family and then your health and dating. And uh, so when you show up, you want to be on your best. And that means, you know, clean up nicely and uh, make sure that you're feeling good, that you take a moment to com compose yourself, um, not get find yourself like being overly talkative, uh, active listen and make like you're going to meet somebody who could be a very important person in your life and could be a great friend as well as maybe something more than that. So show up uh, and make sure that you're present. Yeah, and I just want to say the first thing, and I know ladies, this sounds so obvious because everyone's going, I know I need to look good and dress appropriately or whatever. But I swear to God, as a matchmaker, I can't tell you how many times a client has said, you know how she showed up and it was such a turnoff because like Robert said, you only have one chance to make a first impression. You only have three seconds where that person right. evaluates, you know, what do I want to even see this person again or do I even want to really get to know this person? So really make an effort to make that first impression visually because I will tell you ladies, again, this sounds obvious, men are very visual. If they are not physically attracted to you, it's not going to go any further. A man needs to be physically attracted, right, Robert? Robert's uh, smiling. <laughs> it's sad but true. You know, this is how we're wired. So, and uh, I'm sure women are wired that to to a certain extent also. But you know, for guys, uh, the woman shows up and she looks nice. He's going to pay attention uh, right from the get go. So, you know, you want to be on your best, and you also want to leave if you're coming to, on a date. You know, after work or whatever, you want to leave work behind, even if you have a tough day. And look at this as a fresh beginning and really start out at the beginning and don't have judgments, don't carry around your past relationships or any other issues that you may have. Show up and be present and be ready for some fun. Great point. Okay, your second tip is don't show up late. Again, these sound obvious, but <laughs> again, how many times have you and I heard this, right? Well, it, you know, showing up late uh, is just a sign of uh, either that you don't have, you can't manage time or you're disrespectful. Uh, and I was, okay, listen, the guy should be there first. For men, be there ahead of time. Get a good seat at the bar or a table, whatever, and uh, make sure that you're, you're there so when your date shows up that she knows that she's there. She doesn't have to go sit at the bar, order a drink for herself, start a tab, have creepy guys come up and start hitting on her. You want to, you want to make sure that you're there to welcome her. You're her escort for the you know, next couple of hours, whatever, so don't be late. If you're a woman, you know, it's okay to show 15 minutes late uh, because you want to make sure the guy's going to be there and you want to give him, especially if you're in a big city, 15 minutes is nothing, but you want to make sure that you give him a chance to get there, get things set up to welcome you. And then you can get kind of a fresh idea as to how he's handling things by if he's there, if he set things up to make it comfortable for you. If you show up a half hour late and you don't call or text or whatever, 
you know, that now you're getting into the area where it's a little bit rude. Regardless if you had a tough day or you had meetings that ran over, at least let the guy know, particularly if it's a first date. It's just a sign of showing respect for the other individual, whether you're a man or a woman. That's a good point. But I would also add that I know you say it's okay to show up 15 minutes late, but I think as a common courtesy, women should text and say, I'm just running a few minutes late and don't make the guy kind of sit there and wonder if he's getting stood up because 15 right. minutes, a guy could start to wonder if he's getting stood up. Yeah. but yeah, Okay. I'm just like the New York thing with everything. It's like you always give a buffer of 15 minutes because a taxi, uh, taxi traffic or subway delays or whatever, but I agree with you. Um, uh, you sh if you're going to be 50, even 15 minutes late, let the guy know. I think if it's 10 minutes or 5 minutes, you don't have to do that, but 15 minutes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So your third tip is, and again, these sound <laughs> obvious, but I can't tell you how many times I've heard this, but don't drink too much. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, drinking is a, is a fun sport, and uh, what <laughs> What happens when a lot of people get together? They they're a little bit nervous and they have a little bit of anxiety. And you know that if they do drink, uh, that first drink could go down pretty quickly. And I always uh, advise people like limit your first date like to two glasses of wine or two drinks tops, uh, because you you want to just keep yourself together. And we get a little too loose with the lips and everything else when we start drinking. I mean that's part of it. Now today's yeah, more uh, millennial driven culture. You know, drinking is a, is a group activity, and a lot of times there's a overindulgence and a little bit of a binge orientation. So you have to be careful when you meet up with somebody for the first time to be on your best behavior. Make like it's an interview to a certain extent in terms of your behavior, uh, and you know, keep your mirror the other person. Uh, I would, if I met somebody and I knew they didn't, I'd offer them a drink. If they didn't drink, uh, you know, coffee or iced tea or club soda or whatever. And I would make sure to only have one drink and um, then maybe join them if they're having club soda or whatever. Because not everybody in, indulges in alcohol. But the most important thing is don't get smashed and then just get sloppy. And I've been on dates where that's happened. And I was with a, a one time a very beautiful woman and she started pounding glasses of wine. And then she started sitting on my lap and making out. And, you know, it was great. But I realized, you know what? She's crazy. And over like the... I went out with her one more time. I asked myself, should I do it or not? And I said, okay, once more. And she was just crazy. And that's that's why she, she didn't handle herself. And uh, she got drunk on the first date. And um, it was just, no. You, you have to be able to keep it together, at least for a date or two. <laughs> Well, and that's very true, and I've heard that complaint from men, is that when a woman gets drunk or even just tipsy, it's a huge turnoff because, number one, it shows she can't control herself, but number two, like you started to say, it's just like, not that every woman's crazy that drinks too much, but it just, that's not the type of woman that you want for a long-term relationship. You don't want the party girl that's always drinking and getting drunk on a date, right? Yeah, most men don't want that. They they like somebody to enjoy good times with, but you know they really don't want to date on you know, have a relationship with with a with a real party girl because uh, you know she's partying with you. She could have that party mentality that everything goes and anything goes, and uh, that's not always a good thing either. Exactly. Okay, so your fourth tip is to have an exit strategy. I can't wait till you tell <laughs> us about this one. Well, for the first date, uh, even if you're having a great time, I think it's a good idea to you know keep some type of time limit. I'd say two hours max. So you want to have uh, some type of beverage, maybe meet up casually, have a beverage. If they don't drink, maybe you could meet at Starbucks or whatever. But it's better if you can go to a wine bar or something like that. And then if you're having a great time, maybe you have a second glass of wine and then maybe an appetizer. You go someplace else and you have an appetizer. And even if you're having a great time, I think it's best on that first date to say good night and save something, save dessert for the second and third and fourth dates. And that's always served me well because especially if you have a couple of drinks, then you're going to start talking too much, you're going to reveal too much and just it's better just to like have a nice and good impression, really meet somebody uh, the right way, have some fun and then say good night and leave some anticipation, some mystery. And I think that goes for both men and women. That you want to leave something for the for the next day. You want to. It's like a TV show. A good TV show. At the end of the episode, you want them to find out what happens next week. Exactly. Yes, those five-hour dates on a first date are not good. 
right. And All right. They can end up anywhere. And uh, I've been there, and, you know, that's a whole other issue. Right, which almost <laughs> leads us into your fifth tip, which is don't have sex with him. And, again, these sound obvious, but I can't tell you, ladies, how many times I've heard that women make this mistake. Now, you know, everybody's different, so I don't like to paint the whole brush saying, like, never have sex on the first date, because it can work. And I, my, my point of view is when two adults are together, they know what's right. And it could be the first date, it could be the tenth date. It doesn't matter. It's mm -hmm. when it's right, and you don't want to force it. Uh, but I find that for women, if they go to bed with the guy on the first date, the guy's going to go to bed. He's not going to say no. And then, then, you're, then there's this cloud that hangs over a little bit. It's pressure on the woman. Is he ever going to call me again? The guy's going to think, I wonder if she does this all the time. She goes out on Match.com dates or whatever, and then she hops in the sack. Or was I special? I don't know. So it creates a, a necessary... Um, anxiety and questions where if you don't have sex on the first date you're not going to have those you're not going to have those issues and you can always have sex if you want on the next the second date or the third date or the fifth date or whatever but the point is be careful on that first date keep it short and simple and sweet and make the guy want to come back for more after that you can determine when it feels right in terms of sex Exactly. I completely agree. And these have been some amazing tips on a first date. So, Robert, tell our audience how they can find you. Uh, probably the best way is my website, uh, Robert Manny, M A N N I dot com. Uh, there's, uh, I do a weekly blog. So, there's 240 blogs on there. My radio podcast is broadcast through there also. You can find out ways to buy the book. There's free ex excerpts to the book, and there's lots of videos on there. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on the Single and Stiletto Show. Our show is available both in video format and podcast format. If you'd like to get the videos, you can uh, go to singleandstilettos.com. If you'd like to get the podcast, you can download it from iTunes. If you would like to get our free ebook on the three secrets guaranteed to attract any man, and that's based on scientific research, you can go to singleandstilettos.com or you can click right here on the video.